that. So that I would be concerned about. But, the, you know, the big, you know, attention, we'll go over to our next graphic if we can, and it goes all the way back to the last episode. It was the middle of December, and the speculation was that the Yankees were going to get Garrett Cole. And in a sense, he was maybe, you know, the one that got away because we drafted him and he didn't take us, etc. like this. He went to Pittsburgh. The connection with Pittsburgh is their general manager, Neil Huntington. We've made deals with him. We've had a kind of rapport with him. But what I'm going to say is that, you know, I'm glad that that deal did not happen. You know, I'm hearing names like Clint Frazier. I'm not going to call him untouchable, but what I am going to say is I would not have made that deal for Clint Frazier and Chance Adams like mm -hmm. I was hearing. So I would not have made that deal. And, too and high I'm, of a price. Too high of a price. And also, I have concerns about the player. Right, I have well. concerns about Garrett Cole. And I'm going to tell you why. The last couple of years, his ERA has been inflated. And last year, he gave up 31 home runs. Now, here's the interesting thing, ladies and gentlemen. What was being thrown out there, why the Yankees were interested in him, and this statistic I found, you know, it caught me a little bit off guard before I gave it some thought. The Yankees had the highest percentage of off-speed pitches as a staff in Major League Baseball. 49.6% of the pitches thrown by Yankee pitchers were off-speed. And I said, wait a second, that doesn't really sound right to me. And the Yankees knew this stat, and they were going after Garrett Cole because they think he throws too many fastballs, mm. and he's got a four-seam fastball, and he's got a two-seam fastball that acts as um, a sinker, if you will, and he threw, threw that a lot. He fell in love with his fastball. Now, <laughs> here's the deal, and I really had to give it some thought. Because, you know, I'm into stats. I've always been into stats. I've been into Sabermetrics. That would metrics. be a good thing, right? That, uh, that would be a good thing. But throwing that percentage of off-speed. Yeah, right, 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 yeah. However, here's, after I gave it some thought, here's what I'm coming up with, why that's a misleading stat. Hmm. The slider is considered off-speed. And there's why the Yankees have such a high percentage, you know, of off-speed pitches. How many times have people that watch this show heard me say with Michael Pineda and Severino, fastball slider, fastball slider, right. fastball slider. Remember me saying that? Syndergaard throws at 90 miles an hour. Right. His slider. Well, that's the point. And yeah. so does Severino and right. so does Michael Pineda. Right, right, right. So you got 95 mile an hour fastball, 90, 90, 90 mile an hour slider. Right. So yeah, technically it's off speed, not but it's not of enough of a differential, mm -hmm. in my opinion, to be considered off speed. You hang one of those sliders, boom, and you just did the batter a favor. Mm -hmm. So. What I'm trying to say is what would concern me there is that I don't think that the Yankees, even though maybe they think they could get a different mix, I don't think they would be able uh, to do so. And uh, what I also would say that uh, Ray Searage is, in my opinion, a pitching guru. We, <laughs> we gave him A.J. Burnett. He got more out of him. We gave him Nova. He got more out of him. There's just something there to me that I would shy away from. The 31 home runs last year, the fact that his ERA was, was, was bloated the last couple of years, the fact that he had soreness in the elbow in 2016. There's enough red flags that I'm saying, I'm not giving away one of, you know, two of my best, you know, uh, you know, chips in terms of prospects, not doing it. Now, as the interesting thing is, as far as Houston, and that's very interesting, now, he's like their number three starter there. Right. Now. And here's what's interesting about them. And I'm going to call this segment, you know, Breaking Bad. Mm -hmm. Because what it is, is that when we played against them, when we got knocked out in the ALCS, uh, McCullers threw 26 straight breaking balls, curve balls. And they set a major league record. Charlie Morton and McCullers in that game threw 65 curve balls out of 100 and eight pitches, 60% curveballs. So the Houston Astros, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to tell you is they know how to spin the baseball. What they did is they decided through their analytics that the curveball was going to be the next in pitch that's not being thrown enough, that it's being thrown 
with slow enough velocity, 78 miles an hour, to really, really complement that 95 mile an hour mm. fastball, if you get my drift. Now, what I think what they're going to try and do is they're going to try and get Garrett Cole, who can throw, throw in the high 90s, they're going to try and encourage him to throw more oh, curveballs. And since they were successful with it, then maybe they will be the able to. Wolf. Because they were Good fourth luck. in the major leagues, with throwing curveballs, and they were first in the major leagues with spin rate. There's statistics on everything. How many revolutions you get out of your curveball. So it's really unbelievable, <laughs> but they were first in spinning the baseball. It's, some of that is, to me, is it goes too far. But what I will say is that um, with Houston, you know, I could see what they're doing, but they still have their work cut out for them for the reasons that I said. They better hope that the reason why he hasn't regressed in the last couple of years is not simply because the soreness is making him into a one-dimensional pitcher, Houston, because sometimes if you have elbow soreness, I'll give you a perfect example. I talked about Severino. I talked about um, Pineda. There's another guy on the Yankees that became slider happy, Tanaka, for a different reason. He's got the elbow, mm -hmm. and he tries to nurse it. That four Strike that. The um, the split finger fastball, okay. His that his sinker that which which is the split finger puts a lot of stress on his elbow. And in my opinion, he tries to limit the amount of split fingers he throws during the regular season. You see, in the postseason, he gets better because he says, you know, he goes more all out, if you will. He pitched to a four six, mm -hmm. so he throws a lot of sliders because for, for whatever it is that you know, in my opinion. You know, whatever he feels, that doesn't hurt him as much as other pitches. So Houston better, you know, hope that that, you know, that that's the case because they can teach him or well, encourage him to throw more curveballs. We but hope that they're wrong. We hope <laughs> we certainly hope that they're wrong right. because Houston could be the next yeah. Boston Red Sox. It could be two Titans uh, where it used to be the Yankees and the Red Sox every year. That, right. It could come down to the Yankees and so. Houston.